All right, so today's video is going to be completely about myself. It's going to be 21 things that made me successful as a lifter. And the, there's no like sugarcoating anything here. These are just raw things that actually made me successful as a lifter. This isn't going to be biomechanics or rep ranges. These are going to be like legit. What was the difference between me being unsuccessful and successful? So this isn't some generic list. These are actually things that I do think led me to be a successful lifter. So uh, you'll notice it's not all programming. It's not all mentality. It's a mix of both. And there's a lot of different things. And I think this will be one of the more unique versions of this style of video on YouTube. So uh, the first one, and again, this is just about myself. This isn't my advice to you. This is just what I went through. And I, I know some of you guys will be able to relate to at least most of this. So uh, the first one's going to be self-doubt and motivation to prove myself wrong. So my entire life, I've always had a, a big sense of self-doubt for some reason. I always, I, I feel like I can't accomplish things and then I end up uh, working just as hard as I need to or harder than I need to to actually make things happen. So when I first got into lifting, I had always been skinny and I had never actually had that much muscle and I always thought bodybuilding was cool. I always wanted to get big. So I, deep down, I was like, I'll never be big. I'll always be skinny. I won't be able to actually put on muscle. So I worked so hard and put so much time and invested so much of my efforts into building muscle that, of course, that led me to be successful. So I think that motivation to prove myself wrong and kind of prove that, I guess, deep down self-doubt wrong was a huge factor in me actually becoming successful as a lifter. And I think, I don't know if everybody has that trait, but it's almost like, it's almost a double-edged sword. You have to take advantage of that for the good reasons. You can't, like, if I was just to sit there and say, oh, I don't think I'll ever do it, and I just never did anything, now that's a bad trait. It's a double-edged sword. But I said, all right, well, whatever. I don't think I can do it, but I'm going to try anyways and do my best to actually overcome that. And I think that was... That's probably the biggest factor in this entire list. And I don't know if that's unique to me or if other people are experiencing that, but I had that for sure. And I still have it to a degree. Um, like I, I don't know if I'll ever be able to hit like say 18 inch arms or 28 inch legs or anything, but I know how to use that to my advantage and actually make progress off of that. So uh, number two is gonna be, I was always in a calorie surplus. And this is something that it's so sad to see how this has changed in the past few years of lifting. Um, I'm not going to call out any channels in particular, but it's it's such a shame to see main gaining and recomping all the time for beginners, uh, especially the guys that are super skinny. So myself, I probably started at like maybe 13 or 14 percent body fat, just very very thin. Um, in a calorie surplus, it was it was necessary. Like that's. That was my top priority when I wasn't in the gym. And that's what led me to actually put on muscle and get bigger. So I probably put on too much fat when I first started lifting. But luckily, I quit lifting for a few months to go back for uh, sports. And I pretty much lost all the fat that I gained and most of the muscle too. Uh, so that was a good little trial run for me. But the calorie surplus, guys, you can't be afraid of it. So that's, that's what helped me actually build muscle and continue to progress and make the most out of my new gains that so many people miss out on these days. Uh, number three is that I didn't care about abs. So I was purely, purely focused on building muscle. I didn't care about how I looked at that moment. I didn't care about being a little chubby. And I, I never have. I prefer to be 18, 90% body fat. Caring a lot about abs is holding you back. It, the, the honest truth that nobody wants to hear, worrying a ton about your abs is completely holding you back because that's the, the first spot to gain fat. And if you actually want to bulk up and build muscle, it's not going to happen. Like you, you, have to get, you have to let go of that. I know it's tricky for a lot of you guys. A lot of people do care about being shredded. It's holding you back. Like let go of it for at least a few months or a year to put on some muscle and you'll be able to see the benefit that that comes with actually bulking up to put on muscle and maybe that will help you kind of lose that attachment to always having abs 24 7. Uh, number four this is uh, similar in terms of approach and mindset but not necessarily training um, not worrying about strength and obviously this this did eventually plague me and i i stalled out pretty hard but the first one or two years of my lifting, I didn't worry about strength whatsoever. 
I didn't squat bench deadlift. I did certain variations, but I didn't care at all about strength. Uh, my philosophy is that the pursuit of strength and size is going to have correlations. And in general, when you build strength or build muscle, there are going to be certain correlations. But the pursuit and the, the goal of building strength versus the goal of building size is entirely different. One's a performance based uh, in the gym, in the domain of the gym, you're looking to build your performance the most you can. That's going to be strength training or powerlifting. When you're focused on bodybuilding, you don't really care that much about how you look in the gym. It's more so a day-to-day -day life thing. And I think, uh, I think bodybuilding, the best thing I can come up with right now is it's more of like an art. It's more of an aesthetic than uh, a performance. I think, I do think they're entirely different things. I see strength training and powerlifting as a sport and I see bodybuilding as more of like an art. So it's like comparing hockey to like art that's in a museum. I, they're just entirely different things. So so glad that I didn't care about strength. It was hard. It was hard to break that mindset too when I did get caught up in strength from social media. And I'm glad I was able to break that. It took a lot of like, I guess, digging deep to getting back to what my roots of lifting actually are. Um, and I've officially, I want to say I've gotten very close to that now where I, I truly don't care about my strength at all anymore. And I've kind of re refound that love for just pure bodybuilding, which uh, I, I don't think there's enough people talking about on this platform um, or social media or day-to-day -day life in general. Um, number five is going to be making lifting a priority. Lifting was always, always a priority for me. I do whatever I needed to do to get that lift in. And I'm not saying like I would just have this crazy, like I wouldn't just go party till 3 a.m. and go lift at 7 a.m. Like it wasn't, it wasn't like that, but I would do what I needed to uh, do what I needed to do to make my lifting uh, practical and make it actually happen. Like I would revolve, um, I wouldn't revolve my entire life around it, but I would make the right decisions at the right time to allow me to be successful and consistent as a lifter. And I think that's underrated. So overall decision-making and keeping lifting as a priority. Number six is going to be just letting my competitive nature show itself. Um, I'm a super competitive person and I think we all kind of have that deep down, but I've, I've never been afraid to let that competitive side out of me. And I think letting that out in the gym and in day-to-day -day life is going to be pretty important and it has to be controlled, but getting in touch with that competitive edge is going to be pretty helpful. A lot of athletes are going to understand this. And as a, a former athlete, I think that's an advantage that I had from playing uh, one or two sports um, and taking that very seriously too. I wasn't just someone that like went in and kind of half-assed the sport. Like I, I took my sports very seriously. So uh, that taught me a lot and the, the competitiveness bled into my training in the gym. Uh, number seven is going to be discovering good music and good albums that kind of resonate with you. So my best periods of training were when I found a new album, when, when an artist I liked released an album that just resonated with me. Um, I think finding your genre of music and what you like to listen to in the gym and finding an artist that you can kind of connect to a little bit and they people that release music that sits well with you that motivates you and like the lyrics speak to you and the beat speaks to you that's super underrated um you don't have to listen to music when you train and if you are a hundred percent depend dependent on music when you're training i don't think that's the best thing out there i think you do need to learn how to lift without music because when that time comes like you still need to lift, but finding music that you can listen to for certain days when you're not feeling so motivated or for days when you are feeling motivated just to pump things up a little bit more, having that music that you like and that you connect with is going to be super crucial. Um, and again, like this, this isn't programming. These are just, this is mindset. This is your approach and that like energy you put into your lifting. It's, it's, um, it's your approach. And that's, that's what this stuff is. Uh, number eight is going to be buying and wearing clothes that I like to the gym. Um, this one's this one's kind of funny to me because you, on one hand, you have you have people that are like way too caught up in like the current trends and like Gymshark, Young LA, all that type of stuff. Um, I've never been that type of person. I've never been caught up in trends or whatnot. But there's also the people that are like, oh, the gym's not 
the gym isn't a fashion show. Just wear your old dirty clothes to the gym that you don't look good in. Like I, I don't like either of those parties that much. I don't resonate with either side, but finding clothes that make you look jacked, that make you feel good, that's going to enhance your workout, like your appearance. And, and this isn't, your appearance matters to yourself more than it does to other people. And I think that's something a lot of people don't see. They're like, why, why do I need to look good for others in the gym? It's like, no, you're looking good for yourself. When you present yourself well and you wear clothes that make you feel like you are yourself and that you feel comfortable in, you're going to be yourself a little bit more. I mean, I wear a flannel on this channel. I can speak my truth a little bit more when I wear something like this versus if I was wearing like, I don't know, like a winter coat or something like that's just not what I'd wear. So that's why I wear the flannel. Um, I don't lift in this, but for my videos, like that's a good example right there. Uh, next one, number nine is going to be pain tolerance and just the acceptance of pain. Like the <laughs> bodybuilding hurts. There's no way around it. Like a lot of people see bodybuilding as a lot of like fluff and pump work, but if you're just doing like fluff and pump work, that's not bodybuilding. Like, it, I mean, it, it, it just isn't. Um, bodybuilding is going to hurt. You have to have not just the physical pain tolerance, but it's the, it's the mental tolerance for physical pain. It's the mental acceptance for physical pain. You have to know that it's going to hurt and you have to get comfortable being uncomfortable. And as cliche as that quote is, like, that's what taught me how to actually work hard and dig deep and get close to failure. And like, enjoy the burn and enjoy the pain like you have to want that you have to get into that sweet spot as i like to say that's when i was a beginner this is in my first six months of lifting i would like go out of my way to make things hurt in a good way in a good way i wouldn't go out of way i wouldn't go out of my way to get myself injured but i'd push myself so hard to the point where my sets start to hurt and they're painful and they're uncomfortable like you want to get into that that's the sweet spot of the set that's what i would tell myself get into that sweet spot where it hurts and you're close to failure and the reps are grinding like get to that spot and appreciate that you have the ability to get there and understand that that's where the results truly come from when you're digging deep getting close to failure number 10 is going to be competing with the right people um this is this is basically finding people that are on a similar level to you or slightly above that you are striving to catch up to that isn't out of reach like when i was a beginner lifter and i looked at pd users it, it didn't motivate me at all because i'm like i'm never gonna look like that so it's almost like trying to compare yourself as a hockey player to like a football player and saying all right well i'm trying to be better than that person it's like well there's no way to objectively measure that so it, it's two different things it's two different organizations so compete with people that are kind of in the same domain as you that are a little bit better use that as motivation and inspiration to actually better yourself also don't just don't don't just get consumed with gratitude too and i know that sounds kind of counterintuitive but don't just compare yourself to like when you were smaller or the people that just started lifting that you're lifting with like Compare yourself to people that are a little bit better than you. That's going to motivate you to actually keep going. It's good to look back and say, all right, well, I've come a long way and I, I look better than my old self and I've made progress since I first started. Like 100% that's important, but keep that fire going. Keep that motivation going. Don't get complacent is what I'm trying to say for this point. Um, number 11 is going to be always seeking knowledge. And whether this was like, finding extra time at work or when I was at school or just like as I was going to bed or if I had a break at some point, doing research, listening to YouTube videos, looking up things online, trying to find the best resources I could to actually learn about lifting, spending time talking to experienced lifters, seeking the knowledge, that's going to be key. And you can't get you can't get too caught up in the knowledge because if you're just seeking, like I talked about in my last video, if you're just seeking knowledge and trying to optimize everything in, in hopes that that can override actual hard work, that's a problem. But seek to refine once you have that base of working hard down, once you have that base of a little bit of muscle mass. So seek the knowledge, keep growing yourself mentally. There is a correlation between under, how much you understand programming and lifting and how far you can actually take your physique. So as you're progressing in the gym, progress your mind too. Uh, number 12 is going to be high frequency, high volume. Um, this is a little bit more of a programming one. I don't want to speak in, 
in too specific of terms here, but I wasn't afraid to train high volume or high frequency. When I trained super high volume in the past, it wasn't just because I was smoking a muscle, like doing 20 sets a session three times a week. It's because I was training a muscle three or four times a week with a moderate amount of volume. And sure enough, in my weekly volume, that's gonna add up to a decent amount. Was it the high volume that made me gain a ton of muscle? Maybe, was it the high frequency that made me gain a ton of muscle? Yeah, probably, I think that makes a lot more sense. Um, but I think the combination of the two, having a challenging high amount of volume and having a challenging high amount of frequency in my program was key. And that's why my beginner template that I released when I first started the channel is kind of surprisingly high volume for beginners. And it's, it's because it's high frequency. You're not doing a whole ton each session for each muscle, but once you recovered a couple days later, you're just gonna do similar things and similar amounts of volume again. And I think that frequency allows you to get in muscle protein synthesis and learn the actual skill of lifting and build the habit of lifting that that's gonna make you successful. And that's what made me successful when I was a beginner. Um, number 13 is gonna be proximity to failure. I was never, never afraid to get close to failure and brush right up to it. There's certain lifts certain lifts that you can't take to failure and that you shouldn't take to failure, but there are lifts that you should be really pushing close to failure. That's, uh, that's something that a lot of people need to focus on. If you haven't learned proximity to failure, you should probably learn that first before you continue to refine the rest of your program. Proximity to failure is gonna be key for hypertrophy, getting everything activated, getting it working. Um, number 14 is gonna be adaptability and consistency. I was always able to adapt my training and I was always able to adapt to whatever situation I was in uh, in life. Like as a younger man, I've moved a bunch. I've changed gyms a ton. Like I've gone through these situations where it would kind of derail most people from the gym, but I would go out of my way, probably at times making lifting too high of a priority, but I, I don't see... I don't see how that can really be a problem. I think taking your training seriously is important. And I think if I'm say in the process of moving or changing jobs, I don't think taking an hour, hour and a half each day to continue to lift through those times is the end of the world. Like is my mental focus gonna be there as much? Maybe not quite, but I, I kept that fire going and I kept the ball rolling through times where most people would just give up and then you have to wait to kind of get settled you have to wait for that fire to reignite. And I just kept it going the whole time. And it's not so much like, did did not taking the two weeks of moving off of lifting make me incredible gains? No, but it's that habit of every time I have like a major life change happen and I stayed consistent, I've never gone through a longer period of time where I actually missed time in the gym. Like it's been extremely consistent since I started lifting. Water break, been talking for too long here. Luckily, we just got a couple more. Uh, number 15 is going to be posing. So this is kind of an indirect one. So I think learning how to pose, not just to build like mind-muscle connection, but to build physique awareness, like understand where your strengths and weaknesses are. It's easy to, it's easy to kind of avoid posing and just train muscles that you kind of want to or that you want to build. But when you can pose and you can flex each muscle to see what actually looks good and what doesn't, you can get a really good idea of strengths and weaknesses, and you can also build a good mind-muscle connection. I think that's one of the most underrated things. I think people that know how to control and understand their own physique can translate that into the gym in terms of understanding strengths and weaknesses and how to even program from there. Like posing is going to be pretty important. I recommend that you all learn how to um, learn how to do it. Number sixteen is going to be lifting at night. Uh, lifting at night was key. I lift in the morning now, and I hate it. I I can't stand it. I get up at like five and hang out for a little bit, make breakfast and go lift. And that sucks. I hate it. And I'm not one to complain about circumstances like that. It's just the reality of where I'm at. Um, but when I was lifting at night, my workouts were incredible. I think it's because I was kind of pumped up. I was excited throughout the entire day to go lift. I was mentally preparing for the lift the entire day. And that's what I got to end the day on. I didn't have to worry about going into work or going to do any projects or anything after that. Like I could just go take my time and just put all of my focus on the lift. I'm someone like, I'm nocturnal. Like I, I still, I go to bed early and I get up early. It's, that's just not who I am. I just have to do it because I'm 
an adult in this country and that's just the way it works so lifting at night i got incredible workouts and made awesome progress and it, it wasn't just physical energy it's it's mental energy like i was mentally focused i was in tune i was crushing those sessions i was going above and beyond versus now it's like i still train hard and that it's mostly discipline at this point but when i was truly in touch with my workouts and training at night and going hard like i was just that much more mentally in tune and i do think that starts to make a little bit of a difference when you're doing that repetitively uh, number 17 is going to be working towards goals and not just relying on discipline so i know it's a common thing on social media to just talk about oh it's all discipline it's all just being tough and sticking with it and i i love that i don't think that's all you need for bodybuilding though i think bodybuilding isn't just it's not just showing up it's like you can show up to the gym, but that doesn't actually mean anything for results. I think you actually have to execute to the best of your abilities. And the discipline to go and show up can only get you so far because you do have to like actually train hard and perfect everything. So it wasn't that I, I was never somebody that just like worked purely based on um, discipline. I worked purely on like just passion and excitement for training and i i relied on motivation and if i wasn't motivated i'd find ways to get myself motivated whether it's changing my training watching somebody on youtube or just like reevaluating my goals looking back to why i started like finding ways to keep motivation high and working to keep your motivation high is going to be key don't just rely on discipline discipline's a great skill but it's more than more than just discipline that's a hot take i i totally understand that but that's the truth for me. Um, where am I at here? Number 18 is going to be emotional attachment to lifting and not going through the motions. So actually very similar to the last point, creating an emotional attachment to lifting and not just going through the motions of the day to day. Like there's a lot of things in life that are mundane that we can go through. Like you can do the dishes and go through the motions, but as long as everything's clean, like you're good. You don't have, you don't have to have an emotional attachment to doing the dishes. But when you're in the gym and you're bodybuilding, if you're just going through the motions, you're not going to get that much out of the workout. You have to have an emotional attachment to your training. It makes it fun. It makes it exciting. Like you, it gives you a purpose of being in the gym. Like don't be afraid to be like attached to your training and actually take it very seriously. As long as it doesn't start to just completely derail the rest of your life. Like, of course, have balance, but be attached to your training. Take it seriously. Have that just emotional edge in your training and i think that's something that's just not talked about i think it's super underrated number 19 is going to be forcing growth and not just hoping for growth i think a lot of people trick themselves into making progress where they're like oh i need to be two reps in reserve uh i need to be two reps shy of failure and i think i'm good enough from there like no don't just like do the minimum and hope you're actually making progress like force it to happen go above and beyond push yourself hard make your body need to adapt get your body uncomfortable push yourself hard don't just hope it's going to happen don't just do the least you can and back off and wait six months and hope you're bigger like go above and beyond push yourself hard you don't have to like overtrain forever you don't even have to overtrain at all but get uncomfortable and really push yourself and just when you can take a few months and really train like that it puts things in perspective what true hard training actually is. Um, number 20, this is a unique one. So I do want to preface this by saying that I got into lifting. It, I'm not going to tell the entire story here, but health has always been a concern for me. And it's always been my, my number one priority. And with that being my mindset i never considered taking steroids a lot of people talk about and, and this is normal people that aren't as concerned with their health as i am will say oh well at some at one point like basically most naturals have said this most natural bodybuilders have said this at one point i was considering steroids or i at one point i was about to buy them and then i backed off i never considered them and I'm not saying that to like put myself on a moral high ground, but it's purely because I cared more about health than anything else. 
So it was never even in the question. And I think that allowed me to focus on my training the most that I could because I knew it was never a possibility. I never had to like worry about that mental battle between saying, all right, well, am I, am I at my natural limit or did I put in my three years of natural training before I can hop on gear? Like I never even considered it. It was never, never even in the question. So I think just having that mindset of like, all right, well, it's completely out of the question. I'm going to be natural for my entire life. That made things easy because I didn't have that distraction. I didn't say, oh, well, I'm at year two. I get to take steroids at year three next year and I hit my natural limit. I can just half-ass this year because I'll be jacked for the rest of my life. Like that was out of the question. I was, I knew from day one that I would purely be natural for the rest of my life. And I never had to worry about like hitting my natural limit. I never had to worry about any of these things because I, I only had that one option. When you have more than one option, it's hard to focus on one thing. So when you give yourself one lane to stay in, it makes it pretty simple. So I think having that right mindset, and this isn't even, I don't even think this is something that I chose. I think I was just born like that. Like I've been, I've always been concerned and cared for my health. And like, it's been like that since I was a little kid. So I think um, that maybe that's a genetic thing where I'm just wired that way, or maybe it's something that um, I, taught myself growing up and learned that health is important but i think that gave me a pretty big edge so if you guys can find a way to take your health seriously and understand how important it truly is that will give you a pretty big edge um, because in my experience that made a big difference um, and number 21 the final one this will be a fun one probably a hot take um, uh, my i bad genetics basically so i'm not saying i have bad genetics but i don't have I don't have the genetics to be a good bodybuilder. I don't, and I've, I've accepted that, and that's totally fine. But that's a, a blessing in disguise because that made me go above and beyond. That made me seek all this knowledge. What you'll notice a lot of the time is that the people like myself that have the experience and have accrued the knowledge of lifting, a lot of the time we don't have good genetics. The people that have the good genetics are look they're the pro bodybuilders they're people that are already jacked like do you know how many jacked guys are on instagram that have like the perfect genetics that don't know what they're talking about it's it's honestly insane how many jacked people give out like bad lifting advice um and i think that's one of the benefits that i had with not having the best genetics because i basically just focused on working hard and overcoming that so um, I'm not going to go out on that one forever. I've been talking for too long, so I'm starting to lose it a little bit. So um, I hope you guys could relate to some of that or at least took a couple notes from this. But with all that being said, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.